Justin Hilliard, Sean Wade, Jonathan Cooper, and Tuff Borland, I think, are all on the call. And we're going to open up uh, questions for them with Joey Kaufman from the Columbus Dispatch with Adam Rittenberg on deck. Joey? Hey, guys, this is a, this, this could be a, que anybody can, this is a question for anybody. But one of the things that Justin mentioned is um, he was concerned or, or thought about when the, rec when the rest of the student body comes back campus in a couple of weeks the idea of, of of being safe and you guys are all being tested for covid but maybe regular students are not what what is your um i guess general thoughts on, on staying safe when the rest of the student body comes back yeah i'll, I'll start this one off this is justin hillier by the way um i think coach day i think coach day and the coaching staff honestly have been so transparent about you know, what this season could and what this season's probably going to look like. You know, as leaders and as a team, we're starting to understand that this season's probably not going to look, you know, like a normal season. And with that comes, you know, that probably means that we won't be able to do some of the things we're usually able to do, such as hang out with the student body, uh, really just be around with the student body. And we understand that we kind of have to keep, you know, keep our touch kind of just within, within, within each other. How, how do you is that is that a, how much of a challenge is that? Because I imagine you guys still have to go to class, um, and, and they're planning to still have in person classes, and and just there are other parts of, of being a college student, I, I imagine, which are that you guys normally have to go through. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is John, Jonathan Cooper here. Um, yeah, I think it's a challenge for sure. Um, it's because not only. Uh, not hanging out with the student body, but I know uh, a couple of players who have in-person classes and they're going to have to go to class and be around other students. Um, I feel like we just have to kind of take it upon ourselves to distance ourselves from them and wear a mask because we don't know where those other students have been and just be smart about who we're around or who we're sitting next to or just kind of separating ourselves because like Justin said, this is it's different and um, we have to carry it that way and act that way and sacrifice being around other students, even though it's going to be a challenge with them coming back on campus. We kind of just have to um, be uh, by ourselves and not really interact with a student body like that. Thanks, guys. Okay, next up is uh, Adam Rittenberg with ESPN.com with Dan Hope. Uh, on deck and if I could ask just because we've got so many uh, people on the call as well as so many players on the call direct our questions to one of our guys and then if you want another guy to answer that same question you can use the follow-up for that so up next uh, Adam Rittenberg Adam we may have lost Adam so I'm going to move on to Dan Hope from Levin Warriors with Tim May on deck Dan Hey guys, uh, my question for Sean, uh, you had a decision to make last year about, you know, coming back for another year. Uh, you, you made that decision now with all that uncertainty, just wondering, you know, have you had any second thoughts at all? And have you thought at all about, you know, whether opting out is something you should do for this fall? Um, so I had no second thoughts, no second thoughts here. No thoughts about opting out. Just really taking it day by day and just trying to enjoy what we have right now. Like we're going through this pandemic, uh, we really just can't do nothing about it. We just gotta listen to the Big Ten and our coaches and go through, through day by day and just see what they're talking about. Really, um, like we got the best, we got the best of everything out of Ohio State. So we've been taking it serious. I, I remember countdown well. So really, really haven't been thinking about up and out or nothing like that to be honest. How tough is that when you make this decision to come back, you know, with this idea of you're going to play outside corner, you're going to have this chance to improve your draft stock, and now you have no idea what the season's going to look like? Um, really, to be honest, I just, I can't, I can't really think about it right now. I got the focus just on camp right now. Um, like, like Justin said, I heard earlier, he was talking about the schedule. Like, oh. we're looking forward to that, looking forward to playing Team on North, looking forward to playing who we play. But right now, as a team and as myself, I just got to focus.
focus on camp. I can't worry about the outside world right now. Thanks, John. All right, next up is Tim May from Letterman Row with Bill Landis on deck. Tim? Yeah, thank you very much. I'd like to ask uh, Tuff and Sean maybe if they could address, and Justin Hilliard, where they could address uh, how things have been different from a workout situation over the last several weeks, and what do they expect to be different about uh, preseason camp when it opens uh, hopefully uh, on Friday? Yeah. Um. I mean, throughout this whole process, we've just been um, listening closely to the protocols that our athletic training staff, our strength staff, um, you know, and the protocols that really sure you know, they put into place. Um, specifically, I mean, everything's been spaced out six feet apart. Um, we've actually been masked um, while doing drills and um, – you know, in the weight room and things. Um, they've been sanitizing everything. So I think um, moving forward into camp, um, just the flow of practice may be a little bit different because they're going to have to, you're going to have to take multiple reps at a time um, and then wait while they sanitize. Um, just small things like that. Um, really the biggest difference. Yeah. Yeah. Justin Hilliard. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, wanted, I want to say, for example, Justin, I, I don't know, how, how much is that going to take getting used to? Or is it kind of cool to have uh, maybe in some respects a kind of a different way of doing things? You know, your, your 18th year at Ohio State. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, things are different every year, but obviously this year is a lot different. Um, I think so far we've been really good at being able to adapt you know, to we've been uh, to what we've been allowed to do. As for example, two weeks we had to quarantine because um, we had some guys get coronavirus way back then. But we were able to ramp stuff back up and you know keep keep the process going to where that wasn't a problem anymore. I think I think the name of the game this year is going to be just being able to adapt to whatever procedures and uh, you know rules come as we go. But I think as of right now, we got a great system. Our coaching, our training staff has done such a great job of. Uh, just creating as safe as safest environment as they can for us. Are you confident there's going to be a season, Justin? Yeah, I'm real confident. I mean, that's all we're thinking about right now. You know, as a team, we're not worried about uh, – we can't obviously control uh, many of the things that are going on out there. But we understand that what we do have control in, such as we can't have guys on our team getting coronavirus or tested positive for coronavirus. So we're doing our best you know, to social distance, to wear masks, to wash our hands as much as possible because we know if uh, if we do have an uptick, that could, you know, jeopardize our season. But we're not – right right now we're not worried about um, what, what's ahead. We're just living in the moment. Thank you, man. Next up, Bill Landis with The Athletic with Dennis Dodd on deck. Bill? Hey, guys. Uh, I'll ask this uh, one to, to Jonathan. Um, there, there are – uh, important, you know, decision makers, ADs, presidents, stuff like that, like making the final call here on whether you guys are going to play. And, and there's been a lot of discussion about players' voices and those conversations. And, and I suppose you can only speak for your own situation at Ohio State. But as players, how much do you guys feel like your concerns are being heard and taken into account while people are trying to make decisions on whether you guys play? Yeah. Um, I feel like. As you can see across the country, a lot of uh, student athletes are speaking out and concerned for a lot of different reasons. And I can only speak to my uh, my personal self and background. And um, I just feel like when it comes to me, um, I feel like my concerns are being answered and listened to by my coaching staff and my AD um, here at Ohio State. I feel like I feel safe. I feel good about everything that's going on. Like Justin said, I'm interested in us having a season. Uh, I know across the country, uh, maybe players don't feel that way about where they're at right now in those situations, but I can't speak to them. And I feel like for me personally and uh, across our student athletes at our state, like we feel safe and confident in our leaders and our coaching staff, uh, with everything that's going on. 
And uh, Justin, uh, for you, you guys uh, uh, earlier mentioned, you know, the idea that you guys sort of have to carry yourselves a little differently in terms of who you're around and just sort of not having normal lives of, of college students. Um, how are you all keeping each other in check with that? Like, do you look at some programs and these numbers that are high or some of them are thrown back to parties and stuff like that? Like, how, how are you all... Um, making sure that, that all of your teammates are, are doing what you guys need to be doing to, to keep your numbers low and, and keep you guys on track practice and play. Yeah, that's a, um, that's a totally new addition, you know, responsibility that we, we as leaders have to keep track of. Um, I think it's important, especially now, as students will start coming back, that people know, is, you know, we can't have that normal lifestyle. Freshmen, especially some of the younger guys, may, um, you know, it's not fair to them because – you know, they just got the college. It's going to be tough for them to be locked away, but they have to understand. Uh, we have to help them understand, hold them accountable that we can't live that same lifestyle that uh, we usually do in order to have a safe season. So it's going to be a challenge, but uh, I'm 100% confident that we'll be able to, to adapt to it. Thanks, guys. Next up, Dennis Dodd from CBSSports.com with Brendan Gulick on deck. Dennis? Okay, Jerry, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay, um, I'll just ask that question a different way to a couple of you guys. During a typical game week, what, what would be your days or hours when you, you could get out and socialize? Because I know a lot of that time is, is taken up. What would that be for you guys? Maybe, maybe Tough and, and Justin. Oh, that's right. I can't. I'm just, I can't do it. Shit. Hey, let's, uh, uh, let's, let's mute our calls to the media, please. Uh, go ahead, Justin or Tom. For me, so you're asking. You're, yeah. right. go, go ahead. You want it, Justin? Yeah, you, you know you can't do it now, but what would be your open periods during a typical game week when you could just let your hair down? I mean, personally, for me, um, I like to get in the facility um, in the morning, sometime um, before classes start. Um, so that's watching extra film or um, lifting with the strength staff. Um, and then throughout the middle of the day is when I do, like, classes or have some free time. Um, so that, that would be, like, the biggest, um, I guess, the most freedom um, that I would have in my day um, where, you know, issues could arise. But like all these guys said, um, we need to be careful about the situations that we're putting ourselves in and be um, aware of what's going on um, around us. Um, so I don't know what that looks like this year. Um, you know, those routines really haven't been established yet, but um, just try to try to stay out of Dodge as much as possible. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I agree. I agree exactly with Tuff. I mean, I'm. Yeah, I agree exactly what Tuff said. Um, I mean, during the camp life is obviously much different. The season in camp, we're really only around each other ever. But the only, really, the only issue. I mean, I've been on ca off campus for a while. Obviously, I've been here for a while, so um, I don't think this is as big as big of a worry for older guys. But as I think, I worry about some of the if any issues will occur, which it won't. Is um where younger guys who are around the dorms or who are around, you know, the general population freshmen, where they're usually um, just, hang, just hanging out after Packers or anything like that. Obviously, like I said, that won't be a thing this year. Um, they understand that, you know, they won't be able to do some of the things that everyone else is usually able to do. Thank you. Next up, Brendan Gulick from Sports Illustrated Maven with Jeremy Birmingham on deck. Brendan? Thanks, Jerry. This first question I'd like to address to Sean. Uh, Sean, by choosing you as a captain, your, your teammates are telling you that they trust your leadership. Can you speak to how you take pride in being selected as a captain during a time that there's a whole lot of uncertainty right now? I'm taking a lot of pride in that. Oh, I, I can say that I'm a different type of captain. I'm not really a vocal person. But I lead more by example on the field and just working hard. That's that's most of what type of captain I know. And I, I really appreciate it. I'm thankful for it. My teammates vote me for a captain. 
But I take a lot of pride in it. Um, really looking forward to the season through this pandemic, and this is really a special time that we're going through. Um, really, nobody in the football history has gone through a time like this. I feel like, and just just trying to take it day by day, and just keep on supporting my team and supporting the Buckeyes, and just keep keeping a positive mindset. So, great. And then one question for Jonathan, please. Um, Jonathan, Sean kind of touched on it. Obviously, none of you guys have ever been through anything like this before. Really, nobody has. Um, I- I'm curious how you're trying to stay mentally and emotionally healthy in addition to trying to stay physically healthy and, and get ready for a season. Yeah. Uh, emotionally, I feel like us being away from each other was hard for a long time. But, you know, even with everything that we're doing at our house with wearing masks and uh, staying six feet apart. Um, it's great to see the guys and just be around the team and feel the energy and be able to work out and practice together. Uh, I think that's doing a, a huge thing for everybody's mental health and just feeling and being around uh, other people is, is great, you know, because you don't want to be isolated by yourself all the time. But uh, I think that's, I think that's the major thing is that we're together now in some way, shape, or form. But we're together and we get to talk to each other and see each other's faces. And uh, you feel that energy and it's just great. Great. Thanks very much. Next up, Jeremy Birmingham from Letterman Row with Nathan Baird on deck. Jeremy? Uh, This is for Justin. You know, obviously you guys are in an unprecedented time right now with the team structure, but for you, I mean, these last few years have been a series of what seems like catastrophic potential losses with the injuries and all that stuff. But now, you know, coming back for this year, being named a captain, has it really struck you, Justin, like what you've had to go through to get to this point? Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird though. Um, sometimes I really kind of just have to sit back and reflect over, you know, some of the hurdles I've had to overcome over the years. But honestly, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, had a view of me as, you know, I'm just here feeling sorry for myself for all the terrible things that's happened for me. But honestly, you know, these, these past five or however long, eight years I've been here, you know, have been awesome for me. It's been, you know, I had the time in my life. And yeah, it means, you know, just, just, just right now it means so much to, just means so much to us, even all the other guys voted captains. I think, um, obviously, we've, we've been dealt with a serious hurdle right now, but, you know, we're coming together as a team, doing our best, um, doing every everything we can to make it happen. You, know, you guys are in a, a linebacker room that is extremely veteran-filled, but you do have a handful of young guys like Court uh, and Cody and, and Mitch that are there. Mm-hmm. But how are you able to take these moments and what you're going through now and, and kind of combine that with helping them prepare for, for what they're going to walk into. Yeah, it's, I would say yeah, that's, a, that's a really good point. Um, I guess one of the major things or hard things to do is kind of um, teach or make the freshmen realize what they're, you know, what they're walking into. A lot of the times in summer workouts, winter workouts, we're able to, or at least maybe even to have spring football, there may be, they're able to at least get like a little taste of, you know, what's about to come through like the hard workouts where the whole team together. Um, some of those finishers we do, you know, they get a little taste of that competition, but um, I would say, yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, that's a challenge is, you know, to having, having these younger guys realize what's about to come um, when the season does take place. And, you know, we're doing that. We're, we're having as many meetings as we can, just having conversation with those guys, but yeah, that's going to be a challenge. And, um, I, th- I think these younger guys, young, young guys have been doing a great job so far. Thanks, man. Guys, I'm going to limit the questions to, to one per person now just because we're running out of time, and I want to get as many uh, into a second round as possible. So we'll open up with a question from Nathan Baird from Cleveland.com with Tony Gerbin on deck. Nathan? Thanks. Uh, for Sean uh, Wade, um, Obviously, one of the things we all wanted to see this spring was just how that uh, secondary was going to come together, especially some of the new cornerbacks. Uh, I know you guys haven't been able to do full-on football things, but anybody in particular who is impressing you right now with the way they've handled the offseason? Everybody, to be honest. Um, <laughs> this year is going to be a very special year. Just just really looking forward to not even myself, but everybody else, to props, to Hooker, 
to Terry Johnson, Seven Banks, Cam Brown. Like our secondary is just so deep this year. It's it's, it's incredible. Like I can play one series, we could throw Tyreek and somebody else in next series, and then just rotate the whole game. It was, it will be no fall off. Like that's how I feel about our secondary right now. You know, I'm really just looking forward to the season to play with them boys and lead them boys and lead lead this team to to Maddie. So I'm just really looking forward to it. Next up, Tony Gerdman from Buckeye Scoop with Austin Ward on deck. Tony? This one is for Sean as well. Sean, who should we expect to see at the spot corner this year? Um, Right now, I do not know. Um, we got a lot of people that could play it. Um, don't be surprised, um, too, with Marcus Williamson. Um, he, he has been doing good things this offseason with the quarantine and training and stuff. He looks very good right now, so... Really, right now, I don't, I don't know to be honest. And do you expect to rotate three corners outside? Um, Coach Com has said and told people that that he he has rotate in the future, and if everybody does what they have to do in camp, he's definitely gonna rotate. And I'm looking forward to rotate because fresh lay is the best. So, thanks. Next up, Austin Ward from Letterman Row with Griffin Strom on deck. Austin. Uh, Coop, this one's for you. We know what you went through to just play in the rivalry game last year, how important that is for you. If that got moved up to September or just out of the last week of the regular season, does that does that matter to you? Is, is that traditional date important? or did, you know, Can you no, play at any no, time? No, no not, a, not at all. That date does not matter. It's just the team of North. As long as we get to play there. Good deal. Thanks. Next up, Griffin Strom from Buckeye Grove slash Rivals with Bill Rabinowitz on deck. Deck. Griffin? Hey, guys. Um, you know, Justin talked about, um, you know, getting back to the national, the college football playoff and winning a national championship being a big uh, motivating factor for you guys. But, of course, um, you know, Gene has said that he's not even really focused on a, on a college football postseason at all. And I was just wondering, uh, maybe Coop or any of you guys, um, what what kind of happens to the to your guys' motivation if you weren't even able to play for a national championship at all? Um, tough, tough. You want to answer that one? <laughs> um, I think every year, every year, yes, we have aspirations of um, winning a national championship. Um, but we know to do that, um, to set ourselves up for that. Um, you know, that goes through Indy, that goes through Indianapolis, that goes through one of the big Ten championships. Um, so, I mean, what, whatever the future brings um, for us, we'll be ready. Um, but we have to handle our business every week of the year um, and getting to Indy and winning the big Ten championship. Next up, thanks. Bill Rabinowitz from the Columbus Dispatch with Doug LaMaurice on deck. Bill? Yes, this is for Tuff. Uh, Tuff, you uh, joined J.T. Barrett as the only three-time captains in Ohio State history. What does that mean to you? Uh, I know it's important for you to be a leader, but could you just speak to, to that accomplishment? Um, I mean, it, it's very humbling. It's, um, I'm honored, honored to be, um, you know, with a guy like J.T., um, who is an unbelievable leader here for many years. Um, you know, but I was, I was listening to your guys' um, call earlier with Wyatt and, and Josh and, and they, those guys said it, said it perfectly. There's a huge responsibility that comes with that. Um, and in a sense, all eyes are on you every day. So you got to attack every day, um, you know, with great energy, great demeanor, um, and the way that you work, um, because, because everyone will be watching and, um, yeah, so you just focus in on every day, um, continue to work, continue um, to what's gotten to me to this point, and, um, yeah. Next up. Congratulations. Next up, Doug Lamarice from Cleveland.com with Spencer Holbrook on deck. Doug? I'll direct this one to Justin. Um, Justin, you personally – are you worried about getting the virus? And we know that there was a pause in workouts at one point for you guys. Just when the players talk amongst themselves, 
are there guys on this team who are just worried about getting coronavirus? Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously, yeah, I think it's like a slight worry. I think obviously no one on the team wants to get the virus, but, you know, with that worry comes doing something about it, um, such as staying six feet away, 10 feet away from people when you can, wearing a mask, washing your hands. But, I mean, obviously, yeah, people understand, um, you know, kind of the little risk or people don't want to get the virus. Like, straight up, people don't want to get the virus. And with that, I think people are doing everything they can in their power and to. Next up, Spencer Holbrook from Letterman Row with Joey Kaufman on deck. Spencer? Sean, uh, what, what did you have to learn from – uh, Jeff and Damon and Jordan to be able to lead a uh, secondary and, and be a captain. Um, I know that Jordan was a huge part of, of the the leadership on the defense last year. What did you have to learn from them in order to, to become a captain? So all of them had a different type of leadership. Rico was like more of the energizer leadership. Jeff was like the spokesman. And Jordan Fuller was more lead, leader by example, kind of like how I was. So really – with my with my role in the DB room, I'm I'm probably the the one that has the most experience out of everybody, which is true. So I have to I have to teach everybody and just make sure that everybody is accountable at, at all times on off the field. Because right now we're going through this pandemic, and this is serious. Like this is either our season or no season right now. And, and right now we understand that as a DB unit, we all understand that, and we're just really taking it day by day, like I've been saying earlier, and just trying to. Just get better. At the end of the day, we we've been watching film, watching old film, new film, just just trying to get uh, get better day by day, and, and approach the day with 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 a positive attitude for real. So, next up, Joey Kaufman from the Columbus Dispatch with Dan Hope on deck. Joey, this is a question for Sean. Sean, what is uh, now that you guys have been able to do some of the walkthrough stuff? What has it been like to to be coached by? I- by Kerry Combs, and, and what should uh, people expect from a uh, from your new defensive coordinator and, and your guys' defense? Um, this defense look, is very special. Um, Kerry Combs came. Uh, I was he was here my freshman year. That guy recruited me. Had left because uh, he had some some things he wanted to do and goals he wanted to accomplish. And now he's back. So it's very it's very special just to be under him again. And now he's defensive coordinator. <laughs> Um, the defense looks very well um, with, with with all our backers and with D linemen and corners and everything. I feel like we're not missing the beat from last year at all, to be honest. And really, just looking forward forward to the season. Thanks. Okay, last two questions. Uh, last two individuals. Next up, Dan Hope from Eleven Warriors with Bill Landis on deck. Dan. Jonathan, my question is for you. Obviously, last year you didn't have the senior season that you thought you were going to have. So with all this stuff that's going on this offseason, is that frustrating at all, just knowing, like, I get the second chance at a senior season and, and now I've got to deal with this pandemic going on? Um, You know, I'd be, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't frustrating. But, I mean, honestly, kind of like what all the other guys said and how I feel, um, you can't focus on any of that stuff. Um, you know, we'll cross every bridge that comes our way when it gets here. But for right now, I'm focused on being the leader for this team, me being healthy and getting better every single day to be the best player I could be. And uh, that's my focus right now and trying to put all my energy towards that instead of worrying about the things that I can't control. Thanks, Jonathan. Okay. And final questions coming from Bill Landis from The Athletic. Bill? Uh, I'll ask uh, Justin this. Uh, we, we've seen the <clears throat> pictures and a little video of you guys practicing uh, wearing masks or, or having those, um, I guess, those gaiters pulled up over your face. Um, what's it like being with those on? Um, what do you think about the idea of having to play a game with a helmet and those on? And have you had any experience with those face shields that the use to kind of cover your whole face <laughs> my i mean everyone has a different experience and my experience has been not pleasant it's pretty hard to um, obviously work out or probably even harder to play football with a tight mask wrapped around your face um i think as i think like i said it's a personal preference some guys are able to wear that all the time 24 7 um me personally i'm i don't think i'll be able to 
wear a mask 24 seven. Um, I mean, but if I have to, I no doubt, you know, you know, I know that, well, I think we're very able to adapt. So if big 10 or anybody were to say that we have to, then, you know, that obviously won't be an issue, but yeah, it's not, those masks aren't pleasant for me. Um, maybe other people have different experiences. I guess if I could, I know we're wrapping up here, but if I could follow up with anybody, if you guys have different experiences wearing those while you're practicing, um, please feel free to share them. Anybody um, else want to elaborate on that? I, I can. Um, no, I, as Justin said, you know, the working out in the gator, running with the gators is challenging. Um, you know, I, I, we've seen a few guys um, here and there trying on helmets, um, trying out different face shields or cloths to wear, um, you know, over their face masks. Um, and I, I think it's just going to come down to, um, you know, personal preference and um, their level of comfort with what they want to do. Um, and obviously, um, you know, abiding by the, the protocols that are in place, um, it's just going to come down to comfort. Great. Gentlemen, Tough, Jonathan, Sean. Justin, thank you so much for your time today, for representing the team, and, and congratulations again on being captains.